Jeff and his family had just moved into a new fancy neighborhood after his dad had gotten a promotion at work. Jeff and his brother Louie couldn't complain though, a new house what was not to love. As they were unpacking one of their neighbors came by who wanted as an icebreaker to invite them to their son's birthday party. To Jeff's and Louie's distaste, their mother accepted. The next day Jeff walked downstairs to get breakfast and got ready for school. As he and Louis finished breakfast they walked down to the bus stop. They sat there waiting for the bus and then all of a sudden some kid on the skateboard jumped over them only inches above their laps. They both jumped back in surprise. The kid landed and turned back to them. The kid seemed about 12, one year younger than Jeff. Well 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 it looks like we got some new meat. Suddenly two other kids appeared, one was super skinny and the other was huge. Well since you're new here I'd like to introduce ourselves. Over there is Keith. Jeff and Louis looked over to the skinny kid and his Troy. They looked over to the other larger kid and I said the first kid I'm Randy. Now for all the kids in this neighborhood there's a small price for a bus fare if you catch my drift. Louis stood up ready to punch the lights out the kid's eyes when one of his friends pulled a knife on him. I had hoped you would be more cooperative but it seems that we must do this the hard way. The kid walked up to Louis and took his wallet out of his pocket. That didn't sit well with Jeff. He stood up but Louis gestured him to sit down. Jeff ignored him and walked up to the kid demanding him to give him his brother's wallet. Randy put the wallet in his pocket and pulled out his own knife. Oh, and what will he do? As he finished the sentence, Jeff popped the kid in the nose. As Randy reached for his face, Jeff grabbed the kid's wrist and broke it. Randy screamed and Jeff grabbed the knife from his hand. Randy's friends rushed Jeff, but Jeff was too quick. He threw Randy to the ground and one of Randy's sidekicks slashed out at him, but Jeff ducked and stabbed him in the arm. The sidekick dropped his knife and fell to the ground screaming. The other sidekick rushed Jeff too, but Jeff didn't even need the knife. He just punched the kid straight in the stomach and the kid went down. Louis could do nothing but look in amazement at Jeff. Jeff, how do you... was all he said. They saw the bus coming and they knew they would be blamed for the whole thing, so they started running as fast as they could. As they ran, they looked back and saw the bus driver rushing over to Randy and the others. As Jeff and Louis made it to school, they didn't dare tell anyone what happened. All they did was sit and listen. Louis just thought of that as his brother beating up a few kids, but Jeff knew it was more. He couldn't help but feel happy. When he got home, his parents asked him how his day was and he said in somewhat ominous voice, it was a wonderful day. Next morning, he walked down to find two police officers at the door. His mother looking back at him with an angry look. Jeff, these police officers tell me that you attacked three kids, that it wasn't regular fighting and that they were stabbed. Stabbed, son. Jeff's gaze fell to the floor showing his mother that it was true. Mom, they were the ones that pulled the knife on me at Louis. Son, said one of the cops, we found three kids, two stabbed, one having a bruise in his stomach. And we have witnesses proving that you fled the scene. Now what does that tell us? Jeff knew he was of no use. He could say him and Louis had been attacked, but then there was no proof. They couldn't say that they weren't fleeing, so Jeff couldn't defend himself or Louis. Son, call down your brother. Jeff couldn't do it since it was him who bet up all the kids. Sorry, it was me. I was the one who bet up the kids. Louis tried to hold me back, but he couldn't stop me. Wait, said Louis. They all looked up to see him holding a knife. The police officers pulled their guns and locked them on Louis. It was me. I bet up those little punks. I have the marks to prove it. He lifted up his sleeves to reveal cuts and bruises. Louis held up the knife and dropped it to the ground. He put his hands up and walked over to the cops. No, Louis, it was me. I did it. Jeff had tears running down his face. Jeff watched helplessly as the cop car speeds off at Louis inside. A few minutes later, Jeff's dad pulls into the driveway. Son, what is it? He asked. Jeff couldn't answer. His vocal cords were strained from crying and he just went to sleep, trying to get the whole thing off his mind. Two days went by with no friends to hang out with, nothing but sadness and guilt. That is until Saturday when Jeff is woken up by his mother with a happy face. Jeff, it's the day, she said as she opened up the curtains and let light flood into the room. Wait, what's today? It's Billy's birthday. Mom, you're joking, right? You don't expect me to go to some kid's birthday party after. There was a long pause. Jeff, we both know what happened. I think this party could be the thing that brightens up the past days. Now get dressed. Jeff's mother walked out the room downstairs to get ready herself. Jeff fought himself to get up and he picked a random shirt and a pair of jeans and walked downstairs. And they headed to the party. As they arrived, Jeff walked outside to a yard full of kids. They were running around in a weird cowboy costume and shooting each other with plastic guns. Suddenly, a kid came up to him and handed him a toy gun and a hat. Hey, wanna play? He said. Ah, no kid, I'm too old for this stuff, Jeff said. The kid looked at him with a puppy dog-like expression. Please, said the kid. Fine, said Jeff. 
He put on the hat and started to pretend to shoot at the kids. At first he thought it was totally ridiculous, but then he started to actually have fun. It was the first time he had done something that took his mind off of Louie. So he played with the kids for a while until he heard a noise, a weird rolling noise. Then it hit him. Randy and his sidekicks all jumped over the fence on their skateboard. Jeff dropped his fake gun and ripped off the hat. Randy looked at Jeff with a burning hatred. Hello, Jeff, is it? He said. We have some unfinished business. Jeff saw his bruised nose. I think we're even. I beat the crap out of you and you got my brother in prison. Randy got an angry look in his eyes. Oh no, I don't go for even. I go for winning. As they said that, Randy rushed at Jeff. They both fell to the ground. Randy punched Jeff in the nose and Jeff grabbed him by the ears and headbutted him. Jeff pushed Randy off him and they both rose to their feet. Kids were screaming and parents were running out of the house. Troy and Keith both pulled guns out of their pockets. No one interrupts or guts will fly, they said. Randy pulled a knife on Jeff and stabbed it into his shoulder. Jeff screamed and fell to his knees. Randy started kicking him in the face. After three kicks, Jeff grabs his foot and twists it, causing Randy to fall on the floor. Jeff stood up and walked towards the back door. One of Randy's sidekicks grabbed him. He picks Jeff up by the back of the collar and throws him through the patio door. As Jeff tries to stand, he's kicked down to the ground. Randy repeatedly starts kicking Jeff until he starts to cough up blood. Come on Jeff, fight me. Picks Jeff up and throws him into the kitchen. Randy sees a bottle of vodka on the counter and smashes the glass over Jeff's head. Fight! He throws Jeff back into the living room. Come on Jeff, look at me. Jeff glances up, his face riddled with blood. I was the one who got your brother sent to prison, and now you're just gonna sit here and let him rot in there for a whole year? You should be ashamed. Jeff starts to get up. Oh, finally stand and fight. Jeff is now to his feet, blood and vodka on his face. Once again he gets that strange feeling, the one that he hasn't felt for a while. Finally he's up, says Randy as he runs at Jeff. That's when it happens, something inside Jeff snaps. His psyche is destroyed. All rational thinking is gone, all he can do is kill. He grabs Randy and pile drives him into the ground. He gets on top of him and punches him straight in the heart. The punch causes Randy's heart to stop. As Randy gasps for breath, Jeff hammers down on him, punch after punch. Blood gushes from Randy's body until he takes one final breath and dies. Everyone is looking at Jeff now, the parents, the crying kids, even Randy's sidekicks. Although they can easily break their gaze and point their guns at Jeff, Jeff runs up the stairs, he hears the sidekicks follow up behind. As they let out their final rounds of bullets, Jeff ducks into the bathroom. He grabs the towel rack and rips it off the wall. The sidekicks race in, knife's ready. One of the sidekicks swung his knife at Jeff, who backed away and banged the towel rack into the sidekick's face. He goes down hard, and now all that's left is the other sidekick. He's more agile than the other one though, and ducks when Jeff swings the towel rack at him. He dropped the knife and grabbed Jeff by the neck. He pushed him into a wall. A thing of bleach fell down on top of him from the top shelf. It burned both of them and they both started to scream. Jeff wiped his eyes as best as he could. He pulled back the towel rack and swung it straight into the sidekick's head. As he laid there, bleeding to death, he let out an ominous smile. What's so funny, asked Jeff. The psychic pulled out a lighter and switched it on. What's funny, he said, is that you're covered in bleach and alcohol. Jeff's eyes widened as Keith threw the lighter at him. As soon as the flame made contact with him, the flames ignited the alcohol and the vodka. While the alcohol burned him, the bleach bleached his skin. Jeff let out a terrible screech as he was caught on fire. He tried to roll out the fire, but it was of no use. The alcohol had made him a walking inferno. He ran down the hall and fell down the stairs. Everyone started screaming as they saw Jeff. Now a man on fire dropped to the ground, nearly dead. The last thing Jeff saw was his mother and the other parents trying to extinguish the flame. And that's when he passed out. When Jeff woke, he had a cast wrapped around his face. He couldn't see anything, but he felt a cast on his shoulder and stitches all over his body. He tried to stand up, but he realized that there was some tube in his arm. And when he tried to get up, it fell out and a nurse rushed in. I don't think you can get out of bed just yet. She said that she put him back in his bed and reasserted the tube. Jeff sat there with no vision, no idea of what his surroundings were. Finally, after hours, he heard his mother. Honey, are you okay? She asked. Jeff couldn't answer though, his face was covered and he was unable to speak. Oh honey, I have great news. 
After all the witnesses told the police that Randy confessed to trying to attack you, they decided to let Louie go. This made Jeff almost bolt up, stopping halfway remembering the tube coming out of his arm. He'll be out by tomorrow and then you two will be together again. Jeff's mother hugs Jeff and says her goodbyes. The next couple weeks were those where Jeff was visited by his family. Then came the day where his bandages were to be removed. His family members were all there to see it. What he'd look like. The doctors unwrapped the bandages from Jeff's face. Everyone was on the edge of their seats. They waited until the last bandage holding the cover over his face was almost removed. Let's hope for the best, said the doctor. He quickly pulls the cloth, letting the rest fall from Jeff's face. Jeff's mother screams at the sight of his face. His dad stares awestruck at his face. What? What happened to my face? Jeff said. He rushed out of bed and ran to the bathroom. He looked in the mirror and saw the cause of distress. His face. It's horrible. His lips were burned to a deep shade of red. His face was turned into a pure white color. His hair sank from brown to black. He slowly put his hand to his face. It had a sort of leathery feel to it now. He looked back at his family and then back at the mirror. Jeff, said Louis, it's not that bad. Not that bad, said Jeff. It's perfect. His family was equally surprised. Jeff started laughing uncontrollably. His parents noticed that his left eye and hand were twitching. Uh, Jeff, are you okay? Okay? I've never felt more happy. Look at me. This face goes perfectly with me. He couldn't stop laughing. He stroked his face, feeling it, looking it in the mirror. Doctor? Said Jeff's mom. Is my son alright? You know, the head? Oh yeah, this behavior is totally typical for patients that have been taking large amounts of painkillers. If his behavior doesn't change in a few weeks, bring him back here. We'll give him a psychological test. Oh, thank you, doctor. Jeff's mother went over with Jeff. Jeff, sweetie, it's time to go. Jeff looks away from the mirror. His face still formed into a crazy smile. Okay, mommy. His mother took him to get his clothes. This is what came in, said the lady at the desk. Jeff's mom looked down to see the black dress pants and the white hoodie her son wore. Now they were clean of blood and were stitched together. Jeff's mother led him into his room and made him put his clothes on. Then they left. Later that night, Jeff's mother woke to a sound coming from the bathroom. It sounded as if someone was crying. She slowly walked over to see what it was. When she looked into the bathroom, she saw a horrendous sight. Jeff had taken a knife and carved a smile on his cheeks. Jeff, what are you doing? Asked his mother. Jeff looked over to his mother. I couldn't keep smiling, mommy. It hurt. After a while. Now, I can smile forever. Jeff's mother noticed his eyes, ringed in black. Jeff, your eyes. His eyes were seemingly never closing. I couldn't see my face. I got tired. My eyes started to close. I burnt out the eyelids so I could forever see myself. My new face. Jeff's mother slowly started to back away, seeing that her son was going insane. What's wrong, mommy? Aren't I beautiful? Yes, son. Yes, you are. Let me go get daddy so you can see your face. She ran into her bedroom and shook Jeff's dad from his sleep. Honey? She stopped as she saw Jeff in the doorway, holding a knife. Mommy, you lied. That's the last thing they hear as Jeff rushes them with a knife, stabbing both of them. His brother Louie woke up, startled by some noise. He didn't hear anything else, so he just shut his eyes and tried to go back to sleep. As he was about to fall asleep, he got the strangest feeling that someone was watching him. He looked up, then Jeff's hand covered his mouth. He slowly raised the knife, ready to plunge it into Louie. Louie thrashed here and there, trying to escape Jeff's grip. Shh, Jeff said, just go to sleep.